We are back. WLTH 1370 AM, Free Speech Friday. Scott and the Rev here. Mm-hmm. It is 724, oh, oh, going on 725, so we got about 35 minutes left here before Marion Williams comes in with the two bar four and starts blasting. Right, Yes, right. starts busting all of us upside the head to kick us out. We don't want that to happen, so we only gotta we, we gotta get out here in a timely manner, folks. Um, Besides, we do have other things to do. You it, know. Exactly. <laughs> Places it, to go, people to see. Yes, yes, and I don't want the two by four. <laughs> I do not want that whatsoever. Oh, uh, one thing that uh, <laughs> one thing that happened uh, in this midterm election that a, uh, that a lot of people didn't really pick, didn't really make that big of a deal of, is that. Uh, McDermott kind of threw the Democratic Party under the bus. He was he was pretty. Did you see that, Rev? McDermott was pretty peeved mm. to, to put it the, in the politically you correct. Think so? Yes. You think? <laughs> yes. He was pretty mad. He said uh, specifically, <laughs> uh, he was very mad that they did not invest in his race, mm. even as it poured tens of millions of dollars into U.S. Senate contests and other places. Uh, his words, these are his words, not mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said, they can give a bleep about me, and it hurts my soul. Honestly, I'm a good Democrat. I've been a good Democrat my whole career. I was Lake County chairman for five years. I've donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to the party, gotten candidates elected. I did everything you're supposed to do, and I, I didn't even get a bleeping phone call from the president which is ridiculous to me. I'm running for the U.S. Senate. There's only 33 people in America running for U.S. Senate right now. Half of them are already in the Senate, and you can't even call, McDermott said. Most national Democrats don't give a bleep. (laughs) (laughs) They're like, where's Indiana, he said. The national Democrats don't give a bleep about us. (laughs) man. So tell them how you really feel, Tom. Yeah, I can almost (laughs) hear him. Queuing up that Michael Jackson song oh, right yeah. now. <laughs> all, I, all I want to say is that they don't, <laughs> don't really care about me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I will say that I, I am a little bit more surprised they didn't pour more uh, into his race. I mean, I know they figured that, that Young would win. I, I'm guessing maybe because they thought it would be a red wave. Maybe they just thought, well, it's not even worth it to try to contend because he is right. He has been, in, in a lot of ways, a company guy. I remember uh, when Hillary Clinton was the de facto uh, standard barrier of the Democratic Party, at least they thought she was going to be in 2007, 2008, when she was running uh, against Obama. Mm-hmm. McDermott went all out for Hillary. He really did. You know, mm-hmm. him and Rudy Clay ended up getting into it. Uh, on, and it actually ended up becoming a national story for a while. Mm. Yeah, it, 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 I remember, I think the Daily Show with Jon Stewart actually covered one of the uh, exchanges that McDermott and Rudy Clay had, I want to say. Ooh. Yeah, I, I, this was like 15 years ago, So, but, um, but yeah, uh, so I mean, he has always supported the mainstream of the, you know, he, he's been a good little soldier. I can understand why he would be a little bit uh, angry about it. Uh, he was the the Lake County chairman, you know, he, you know, but like I said, I think what happened was with the national party, they thought just like many other people thought that there was going to be all these MAGA people mm-hmm. who came out to vote. And it was like, why pour money in th- when Todd Young looks pretty safe uh, and try to contest everything. But I will always say I'm no fan of Barack Hussein Obama Jr., but I've always said the one, the smartest thing Obama did was he said we in the Democratic Party are going to contest in every single state, okay? And he had a fifty-state strategy. Even that's remember he won Indiana, mm-hmm. a, a, a state that no Democrat had won since JFK or something, uh, either JFK or LBJ, one of them. It had been forty, fifty years since a Democrat had won here in Indiana. And Obama did it because he said, nope, we're not going to assume that Indiana is a red state, you know. And, and like, that's the – and a lot of people, like, a lot of the smart people, and this is how I've learned to look at a lot of these people in politics. A lot of these people 
the so-called smart people, they are really there to blow smoke up the behinds of the people with money. And that is all they're there for, to tell, to, to essentially confirm what they already believe. Mm -hmm. Because if you believe that Indiana is a red state and there's nothing that can be done about it, then, you know, I'm not going to try to convince you any different. And that's why I say, look, I, I'm uh, like Frank Mervan is one of the less odious Democrats in, in Congress. He's not one of the, you know, uh, Nancy Pelosi's of the world or, or the Chuck Schumer's of the world or, you know, he's, he's not Marjorie Taylor Greene or somebody. He he is a blue collar working class center, just like Visclosky was mm -hmm. a pro labor, understands he's a Rust Belt working class blue collar uh, he's in a blue collar district and that's how he, he, he carried himself and that's how he carries him. That's how he carried himself when he was in here with us a few, uh, a few weeks ago when he was on a uh, Nuestra Comunidad with Juan and Eve. And, and I, I met him and his uh, lovely wife. Uh, he, he covered himself. He carried himself like a regular guy. And that, I, I believe that helps him in this district. And I always say if, if Mervan could go to the party, the National Party, the National Democratic Party, and sort of tell them, look, you can compete in Indiana, you, but you guys got to stop being the sellout corporate, you know, uh, you, you got you to gotta stop being the, the sort of uppity, elitist snob party and be a blue-collar organized labor party again, and you might be able to win in these places. Mm -hmm. But the people, the smart people, don't really care because, as we talked about earlier, they get paid regardless. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have a caller. Hello, caller. Hey, it's Ty. Ty, do you think? Yeah, I'm sorry. We, uh, uh, but yeah, uh, a lot of the smart people, they are going to get paid regardless of what happens. And, you know, it's hard for me. It, it was hard for me to sort of break myself from this sort of mentality of there being the two teams, the Republican team, the Democratic team. It took a while for that because... You realize once you, the more you learn about politics that a lot of these people who are in positions in these parties, they are just there to collect the check. That is it. And like you talked about earlier, the Republicans not really wanting to overturn Roe v. Wade, not like the the. Mm -hmm. that's, but, that's cannon fodder. That's, yeah. That that brings in the dollars. Yeah, yeah, that brings in the dollars. And the Repub like I said, the Democrats are, are the same way. They are just there to bring in money. They are not there to actually try to compete and win. And so a lot of stuff that seems like common sense, I'm sure McDermott's kicking himself right now. Like, it seems like common sense. I'm in a, a, a you know, I'm, I'm here in, in the Rust Belt. Why can't you guys just help me out a little bit? But he's got to know. Again, those people are not there. You know, they're not there to win. They're there to make money. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's unfortunate for him. Now, one thing I saw, let me say this. One thing I, I saw before uh, before we, uh, we, we leave the midterms, I wanted to talk about uh, Chuck Grassley is seeking his eighth term. Well, he, he won his eighth term in the U.S. Senate. Uh, Chuck Grassley is, uh, he will be 95 at the end of his term. 95 years old, Rev. 95. Wow. Yes. I, I know he's run enough terms to be able to get that, that pension. Yes. And, and so, he 95, he's uh, he, he he's an Iowa senator. Nancy, he's been in, in Washington since 1975. Uh, Nancy Pelosi is 82. She's been in Congress since 1987. Is it time for term limits? And for age limits. <laughs> oh, he, he starts up now. Well, well yeah. The old folks, folks like them perks that come with all that. You know, in fact, I would venture at some point, as much money as at, that they get paid, Yeah. you know, it, it must be more than just the money. Right. It's got to be the perks that go with just the, the fact of being able to say, I'm a congressman. Mm -hmm. and people bow and scrape to that because look uh 
you 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 get you got this salary. Um, okay, you got to get a place to stay, but you know, um, so much stuff gets handed to them. Mm-hmm. And and when's the last time you heard of anybody who went into you know Washington poor, or rather went into Washington wealthy and came out bankrupt? Oh yeah, it's the- always oh, it seemed to be the other way around. Like, you know, this was actually somebody actually said this the other day. Uh, I don't know if it's one of our callers here, but it made perfect sense. And I'm, he said Donald Trump is the only president we've had who's actually poorer than he was when he left the White House. <laughs> and that might be true. I don't know if he actually is, or if hmm. he, but um, because of his dodgy bookkeeping, yeah. So we don't know. But uh, at least on the surface, it looks like that might be true. The Clintons were broke when they left office. And they are worth two hundred million dollars now. Hmm. Now, come on, like and the same thing with the Obamas. The Obamas were not worth that much before, but now their worth net worth has skyrocketed. Mm-hmm. Um, Nancy Pelosi, Rev. I think they said she tripled her mm-hmm. net worth since she's been in office. Tripled it. Mm-hmm. She's worth one hundred and fifty million dollars now. Her and her husband. Her husband. And, you know, it, it's funny, if the, these midterms wouldn't have been so eventful, her, the story about her husband might have been one of the, mm. one, one of the stories uh, that we talked, because there, there's a, something rotten in Denmark about what happened with her husband. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, like, Paul Pelosi, first of all, he was just in a drunk driving accident a few months ago. And, you know, this whole story about him being hit with a hammer by a guy and right in front of the police, the police didn't stop him. The guy from hitting him with the hammer and they were supposedly both wrestling in their underwear. I'm going, okay, like this is, but anyway, Paul Paul Pelosi is supposedly the best stock trader on the planet because he outperforms even the best wall street traders. Right. And so you start to realize how Nancy's net worth can triple triple since since 1987 to the point where she's worth a, a, over 140 150 million dollars her and her husband and you you understand that these people have such entrenched power rev they have such entrenched power from being in the office from the 1970s from the 1980s that you know they it's almost like being in some place in the Soviet Union where the, the 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 sort of the status quo the 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 government is just so like they the like it, it it's almost no point in voting yeah in, in some of these in some of these some of these people are so entrenched that it doesn't even make any sense to even try to challenge them in any way yeah you know I, I'm also intrigued now he had to run McDermott had to run down state in order to win that seat. Mm-hmm. Um, was running for the U.S. Senate a better move than running for the House of Representatives for McDermott? Mm-hmm. Forget about for the party, just for yeah. McDermott. The rep, the mm-hmm. first district House of Rep, that's his backyard. Right. Mervan, that was just his first term. Right. I mean, other than, again, being a good Democrat. And I don't know the relationship between him and Mervan. Maybe Mervan may be his boy, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I can understand that they're friends that he, he's like, well, I can't run for his seat now. But to run in, to run against the sitting first district, and you get, and that means you've got to convince some some red folk mm-hmm. to, to want to go your way. Yep. I don't know. That might have been a bridge too far. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, especially if the Democratic Party weren't weren't going to help him out in yeah in in any way. Uh, Maybe he should have got that nailed down before he even, you know, took that. I know we're you know we're doing it high inside a hundred percent. Clearly, he thought that the that the seat was takeable. And apparently he thought it was takeable 
whether the Nationals supported him or not, or maybe he just assumed that the prospect of knocking off a red seat would just move them automatically, which I guess you could ask the question, well, why didn't it move them? I mean, the opportunity to, to add another seat to the blue tally? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, I think because they were lazy and they were arrogant and they, like I said, they, they write off whole swaths of the country. Uh, they just say, look, this is not, it's, it makes no sense to be here. Again, it's the one thing that Obama did right was just say, look, we are 40, we are a uh, 50 state uh, party. But like I said, too much of the Democratic Party is smart people who in, you know, in corporate uh, surroundings, who are in New York, who are in California, who have no desire whatsoever to get their hands dirty hmm. and associate with all of us here in, you know, flyover country. And so since a lot of them don't care about the flyover country, uh, stuff like the seats like, the, like states like this end up going under them. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they end up getting away from, you know, if they had just tried, they might have been able to push Todd Young a little bit, but, um, but it was not meant to be. Well, I mean, he still can be the, he's still the mayor of, of Hammond. So, there's right. that. so he could, he could, he could fall back on that. But I, I think, uh, he, he won't be, uh, I think his feelings are going to be hurt for a while. Yeah. And do you think do you think that him embracing marijuana and stuff was was a good bet for him? Because I'm thinking that I think maybe for some people in Indiana that might have been a bridge too far as well. I honestly I didn't I didn't think of that being a major issue to run on. Uh, besides, uh, you're running for the U.S. Senate, not the state house. So that would have wouldn't have been had any relevance. Uh you know, I just think okay, if you're running for a federal office, okay, what do you bring at the federal level? That's the kind of that's what mm -hmm. policy are you engaged in at the federal level? It's like when people were talking about with Jennifer Ruth Green about, you know, local school issues. It's like she's running for the House of Representatives. They don't address local school issues except the block grant sort of stuff, you know, the Department of Education thing, she's not going to have that much of an impact over the situation in the Gary School Corporation. Right. Right. I, 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 and here's the thing, too, I think that hurt her. She she was running a, a national campaign. Like, she, like, I mean, we know she's not from here, but even her, uh, her, uh, her uh, election day party, they said she didn't let the local media in. Yeah, I heard that. So, I mean, like, I mean, this is a very, this is a, this is a very closed place. Like, if she was really interested in winning, it seems like she would have been, she would have done a little bit more. And she always did that, even during the campaign, she would always go to Fox News or she'd go somewhere else. Yes, places that really don't resonate here, here all that yeah, much. That, not a smart thing to do. It, she was thinking like a California person. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, if they had had just a straight, regular white dude, boring <laughs> white guy, he might have been able to knock Mervan off. And, yeah. and, and I, that is something that I just can't even imagine. All right, folks, we got to go to a break. I, I totally mm -hmm. spaced. Uh, we do have to go to a break. Uh, when we come back, a very special, a very special anniversary here in the city of Gary. <laughs> 